Welcome to Grove United Methodist Church, where we love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and all of our neighbors as ourselves. I'm Pastor Jan, and I'm glad that you are here with us on this first Sunday in Lent. Hear now the call to worship from Joel chapter 1. Blow the horn in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the residents of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. In fact, it is near. Even now, this is the Lord's declaration. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear your hearts, not just your clothes, and return to the Lord your God. For the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, as a call to worship from Joel. Let us worship our Lord together. Jesus says, the time is ready. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. O come, let us return unto our God, who will have mercy and abundantly pardon. Let us confess before our God as we pray. Most holy God, we admit to you and each other that we are so dazzled by the false gods of this age that we find it hard to recognize who we are, where we came from, or where we are going. We easily become caught up in selfishness, seduced by cynicism, waylaid by glittering consumerism, and led by the nose along the highways and byways created by the powerful vested interest. Please open our hearts that we may know ourselves more clearly and seek you more diligently. Most loving God, arrest the false gods that have diverted us. Show us the deceits that have blurred our vision Unmask the poverty of our goals and longings. Expose the cheap values that parade as virtues. Save us from permitting a rift between Christ and us. And deliver us from cheap guilt and trivial remorse. Please bring us to an honest repentance, the forgiveness of sins, and the renewal of our faith and love. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Hear now the words of assurance. Fellow travelers on the road to Easter, always remember that there is much more forgiveness in God than we could ever exhaust. Receive from God 
through the grace of Christ, the blessing of sins forgiven and a right relationship restored. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is Genesis chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. Then God spoke to Noah and his sons, I'm setting up my covenant with you, including your children, who will come after you, along with everything alive around you, birds, farm animals, wild animals, that came out of the ship with you. I'm setting up my covenant with you that never again will anything living be destroyed by floodwaters. No, never again will a flood destroy the earth. God continued, This is a sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and everything living around you and everyone living after you. I'm putting my rainbow in the clouds, a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. From now on, when I form a cloud over the earth and the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll remember my covenant between you and me and everything living, that never again will floodwaters destroy all life. When the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll see it and remember the eternal covenant between God and everything living, every last living creature on earth. Today's gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit looking like a dove come down on him. Along with the Spirit, a voice said, You are my Son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, this same Spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For forty wilderness days and nights, he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions, and angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee, preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Thank you, Dana, for the reading of God's holy word. You know, there is not a one on this earth who does not have a birthday, right? A time when we were not. A time when we came into this world. A time when we began. The title of our sermon today is As It Was in the Beginning. Will you go with me to the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your holy word that has become a living word within us. We ask, God, that you will continue to open our minds and our hearts, that as your scriptures have been read and your word is proclaimed, that we will continue to hear and joyfully receive all that you say to us this day. Lord, we ask that you will allow this servant to decrease in order that you may increase. Amen. The great philosopher Coeleth in the book of Ecclesiastes reminds each of us that we all have a time to be born. Actually, as Christians, we have two births. The first is a natural birth in which we take our first breath on this earth. The second is a spiritual birth in which we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and we claim the name of Christ and are born again through water baptism. In the good news, as told by John, Jesus told one of the rulers of the Jews named Nicodemus who came to him by night and wanted to know how he could enter this kingdom of God. In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells him that in order to see the kingdom of God, we have to be born by water and the Spirit. In the Gospel of Mark, Mark tells us that this, in his good news story, that Jesus was actually baptized in water. And the evidence of the Holy Spirit that is there with Jesus is shown by the descending dove. Everyone who was there saw that sign of the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I see that, I often think, well, if we claim that God is three in one, then why do we see it showing up differently? Is there really three gods? No. 
there are three natures of God. There are not three gods, but all three natures rolled up into one God, God who creates, God who redeems, and God who sustains and empowers us, often defined in Scripture as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Son, Jesus is sent or created both very human and also very much still God. God in the flesh, we often say. And because these three natures are still always present when one shows up, we know that Jesus is creator, Jesus is redeemer, Jesus is sustainer, as Jesus is God in the flesh. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, we read Jesus speaking to his disciples when he says, The one who has seen me has seen the Father. And the fact is, all four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell us in John 1, 33, Luke 3, 22, Matthew 3, 16, and Mark 1, 10, is that to see Jesus is to see the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' baptism, those who gathered, remember, witnessed the descending of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus. That physical presence of Holy Spirit right there at the same time that Jesus was there. This one God, this one God is still one in the one that we call our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John Wesley John Wesley, our Methodist founder, would probably say to us right now, follow the reasoning, follow the reasoning, follow the logic, if you will. Completing our redemption through the cross and resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven. Jesus, very God, is still with us in Holy Spirit. We might not see Holy Spirit physically present, but we have evidence of the Spirit at work among us, don't we? The Holy Spirit, like Jesus, is still very God with us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit with us right here, right now, inseparably joined. Holy Spirit is the presence of God with us in this age and this time. And to experience Holy Spirit, well, to experience Holy Spirit is to experience God, who created in the beginning, who creates and is creating even now, who is the redemptive healing presence of Jesus right here, who reminds us that we belong to God. You and I belong to God. And by Holy Spirit, through Holy Spirit, we are sustained and empowered to go forth and be the witnesses of this good news of the one God. I don't know about you, but I love to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. That is true today as it was true in the very beginning, starting with the book of Genesis. I want you to listen again how Mark describes this earthly story of God who came to us in Jesus and who remained with us fully God, fully human. In chapter 1, beginning with verse 12, after Jesus was baptized, we read, At once the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit carried Jesus into the wilderness. Why? Where he was tempted by Satan. Scripture says, another word for Satan is evil. The things that would draw us away from God, the great tempter that draws us away from God. We are also told in verse 13 of Mark 1 that Jesus was among the wild, wild animals. So creation was with Jesus there in the wilderness. And that the angels, God's angels, took care of him. And then in Mark 1, verses 14 through 15, we read, 
that after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee announcing good news, saying, now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. So after this time in the wilderness, Jesus exited victorious over all of the things that we would be tempted by, all of the sins that we would, would desire to commit or may fall into intentionally or unintentionally in our lives. And Jesus says, now is the time. Now is the time. You don't have to wait for the kingdom of God, Jesus says. It, it's here. It's here among us. The kingdom of God is very near. And the only requirement to receive it is to repent, to turn around, to make a new right straight path with your earthly life and believe. Believe. Believe the good news. This is the first week in Lent, and this past Wednesday, there were those of us who gathered in this church and in churches throughout our nation and throughout the world, and we took the palms that had been waved on Palm Sunday announcing Jesus as the new king, and we burned them to remember that Jesus died. Jesus came to reign not as an earthly king, but as an eternal savior. And so we took these ashes and we blessed them and then we marked our foreheads with these ashes as a reminder of that we too are called to be born and to die and yet to know that we are living in Jesus. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. It's not too late. and It's never too late with God to begin again. That's what these 40 days that we are now in signify, 40 days minus Sundays, because every Sunday is like a new Easter in which we remember that we are among the redeemed through Jesus Christ. In these 40 days, it's a call to you and to me to care for our spiritual lives, these spiritual homes that God has given us in order that through the Holy Spirit, we might be built into a spiritual house, a spiritual church, to enable us to be able to do the work that God calls each of us to do. How do we do that? Well, we do that through spiritual disciplines. We place ourselves in a position where through scripture, through prayer, through fasting, even through good works and through meditation, that we are called to examine our lives, examine ourselves, our relationship with Jesus. We do that in order to make a new start of our earthly lives, our everyday walking around lives, our church going lives, our disciple doing lives. A new start that will enable us through the power of Holy Spirit who is very present with us to be all that Christ calls us to be as his bride, his church. To proclaim good news of our loving, creating, recreate, recreating God in Jesus, our Savior. Will you pray with me? Creating God, still center of the world you have made, we come to you in this season of turning and returning. We don't know how to seek you with our whole hearts, but we know that you are our source and our destiny in the midst of life. And in this midst of life, we return to you and we turn towards you. And we thank you, Lord, that you receive even the broken heart, the troubled conscious, the conflicted spirit, seeking you. May we honor you in public through Jesus Christ, who is our path homeward to you. Amen.
The Gloria Patre reminds us that we are to proclaim glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. That is the promise that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I hope that you will spend these next days leading up to Easter proclaiming a holy Lent and examining yourself that we might become living sacrifices for our Lord and our Savior Jesus and for the transformation of Christ's world. Let us go now in peace and as you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you God's shalom. Amen. <music>